Well, hello again, boys and girls. This is Mr. Wassman, and today, once again, we are exploring the realm of fractions. We are in our home links, Unit 3, Lesson 5, Sharing Veggie Pizza. So let's go ahead and read the story problem for number one. It says, Karen and her three friends want to share three small veggie pizzas equally. Karen tried to figure out how much pizza each of the four children would get. She drew this picture and wrote two answers. Which of Karen's answers is correct? A. And B. Draw on Karen's diagram to make it clear how the pizza should be distributed among the four children. So actually, I'm going to approach this problem by answering B first. Okay? So let's draw a picture of four children. Okay? So here's a child. Here's a child. Here is another child. And then let's make the fourth one Karen. Okay. Okay. So we have three pizzas divided into fourths, and we have four children. Karen and her three friends equal four. So how would we divide the pizza? Okay, well... Let's say the friend in blue right here, that person would get this slice here, along with this slice here and this slice here. So those three slices together would go to this friend. Now on the next pizza, one, two, three, those three slices would all go to the second friend in red. Now, before I go any further, you can kind of tell that this would get really complicated with all the arrows and lines pointing to each other. So let's simplify it a little bit. So looking at the first friend in blue, that first friend has one, two, three slices. And each slice is one-fourth. So that person got one-fourth plus a second-fourth plus a third-fourth. One, two, three, that would make it three-fourths. And her second friend in red also got one, two, three-fourths. Added together would give you three-fourths. So the correct answer is three-fourths because as you distribute, as you hand out slices of pizza, okay, each person would get three out of the total four slices from each pizza. Okay? Now another way we could think about that is if each person got their three-fourths of a slice and we put them together like so. Okay, that right there would be three-fourths of a pizza. If you took all three slices and put them together uh, as one fraction. Okay, so that's another way for us to think about the amount that each person got. Okay, so now we have some other iterations of the same problem. Number two says Erin and her seven friends want to share six small veggie pizzas equally. How much pizza will each of the eight children get? And then you have to compare who will get more, Karen or Erin. Okay, so we know that Karen over here would get three-fourths based on our model up here. So now we have to come up with a second model for Erin and her seven friends to figure out who got what, okay? So I'll let you try to figure out problem number two, and then you need to compare the fractions, compare the answers. You would compare this answer here to this answer here for number three, okay? Then finally, let's take a look at these practice problems. These uh, holler back to Unit 2, uh, when we were dealing with factors, prime and composite, factor pairs, and so forth. Okay, So list all the factors of 50. Is 50 prime or composite? Well, let's start with that s second question, number 5. So what's the difference between prime and composite? Well, a prime number has only two factors. That would be the number itself, and the number one. 
any number that has more than two factors has to be composite. That means it's been built together with multiple factors, or can be built together. Um, so 50, we know, is composite. And I know this for a number of reasons. Number one, 50 ends in zero. So I know that 10 must be a factor uh, that multiplies together to get to 50. Okay. I also know that any number that ends in zero, that is not the number zero, is even. Okay, I can split any number that ends in zero in half, and I would get two equal parts. So I know that two has to be a factor, okay, of any number that ends in zero, which includes 50. So with that evidence, we know that this is composite. So now we have to figure out what are the factor pairs. Well, we've already, like, hinted to a few of them, okay? One would be the number times one, one times 50. We also talked about 10, 10. What times 10 gives me 50? Well, that would be five, five times 10. We also said that uh, 50 was composite because it's an even number, so we know that two is a factor. How many groups of two can I get out of 50? Well, how many? Quarters is 50 cents. Well, that would be two quarters or tw two groups of 25. Okay. So then we run through the rest of the possibilities. Okay. So one is a factor. Two is a factor. Is three a factor? Well, I know that three times 10 is 30. Three times 15 is 45. Three times... 20 is 60, okay, so maybe somewhere between 15 and 20, well, 3 times 16 is 48, 3 times 17 is 51, oh, nope, that doesn't work. What about 4? Well, if I multiply something by 2, I would have that other factor to multiply by 4, and I can't split 25 in half equally into whole numbers, so 4 wouldn't work. Uh, let's see, 6, 6 times 9 is 54, 6 times 8 is 48, no, that wouldn't work, 7, well, 7 times 7 is 49, 7 times 8 is 56, no, that wouldn't work, so 8 doesn't work either, 9, well, no, 9 times uh, 5 is 45, 9 times 6 is 54, no, okay, I think I've exhausted all the possibilities here, so... Those three pairs are my factors of 50. So 1 times 50, 10 times 5, 2 times 25. Hey, that's no coincidence that our uh, units of money uh, are broken up in a very similar way. You can have one 50-cent piece or 50 pennies. You could have 10 nickels or 5 dimes, or you could have 2 quarters and all those would give you an amount of 50 cents, okay? If you have questions on dividing pizzas equally, uh, comparing fractions, uh, composite or prime numbers, or finding factors, please reach out to your math teacher. Otherwise, we will talk again soon, friends. Thanks.